Hello, I'm Apia Exlegat, and what you're listening to right now is some of the Hytale original soundtrack. It sounds pretty good, right? But today we're not here to talk about the soundtrack and the music of the game. Instead, we're here to talk about the creative mode and the model maker, because we did just learn a whole bunch more about it, and I figured I'd share this Hytale news with you all in today's video. So yeah, let's talk about the model maker, because it was shown off in the trailer, and it is shown off in quite a few additional things they've shown off since then. This is what you can make by yourself within Hytale, and a lot of people see that and hear that and wonder exactly how much power do you really have, which is the question I wanted to answer today. How powerful is the Hytale Creative Mode? And the answer seems to be pretty darn powerful. But let's back up a little bit. First of all, like this if you do like it. And also, let's start the story of how this came about, because the way it's told on the Hytale website is something I find quite beautiful. So let me tell it to you, because back in 2011, uh, Elise Morris started working on software called Craft Studio, which was meant to be a, you know, democratized game making tool, which would allow players to make their own game. It was meant to be fun, it was meant to make it like a game and provide real time collaboration. Basically, the goal there was to create a game making tool, which was kind of like like a game by itself, something you'd have fun and would be easy to make with other people. And then this is how they met their partner and then they did a bunch of stuff together until uh, they became aware that the Hytale team were actually using the Craft Studio tool. And they found that pretty cool, they got in touch and as it turns out, Hytale just decided to bring them into the Hytale team, to bring the creators of Craft Studio into the Hytale team and to make Craft, you know, the equivalent of Craft Studio, but inside Hytale. So imagine that, there was this entire independent tool to make your block style games that is now being built into Hytale that is why there is so much focus on this. Again, when you look at the trailers, it seems almost like there's too much emphasis in all the stuff you could do that way. Like, how many people really want to make new models and new mobs, etc.? But with the, uh, again, the actual abilities you have in the game, it's something they really want to show off. So, Hytale Model Maker gives content creators the power to create new game assets without having to go and learn high-end 3D software. It was important for us to provide tools that were powerful but presented a low barrier to entry. If you decide that you want to start making things for Hytale, we plan to provide you with everything you need in order to do so. From model creation to texturing and animation, it's all presented on one screen. Users are able to quickly access and edit existing Hytale assets, or they can build their own from scratch. When that's done, the export process is easy and allows you to immediately see your work reflected in the game. What you build will fit right into the game, Elise says. It's not like we're working with an external 3D building tool and you have lots of constraints on what can be imported and exported. We just provide exactly what you need. That means you can edit pretty much anything within the game inside the game's creative mode and uh, to give you a couple of examples of this, because they did decide to show off exactly what they've managed to do with the in-game tools, here is what it looks like to create a sword within the game. Again, this is massively sped up, about 20 times in case you're curious. Uh, but you can see, this is uh, what it would look like. You can make your own an you know, model for a sword. So in your own creative mode, you can make your own, not only just like, oh, you can make your own world and kind of change it that way, but you can also make your own swords from scratch if you're a model maker, if you want to get into that sort of thing, if you do 3D graphics, if that's you know, your level, then as you can see, you can make one of these things from scratch. It's really interesting to see it come together like this. Obviously, it takes some time because that's how making this sort of thing works. But it's crazy to see that like, oh yeah, you want to make your own custom sword. You have this big idea almost for your own game. You can do that within... Uh, you know, the Hytale editing tools, although they're using Photoshop here, but you get the point that that is a thing you can do, but it's not just that you can make, like, your own little items, that sounds like, okay, that's fun, but that's within the realms of, like, add-ons and mods for other games, right? Well, look at this, they also have a thing you can use for animation, so not only can you make the model for, say, a zombie, like they've done here, but you can also make the animations, make the frames for it, again, you're seeing it about 20 times speed here again, but yeah, within 20 minutes, they've managed to make not only the, this fun little zombie, this, uh, you know, fella that looks kind of scary, and if he was walking just like towards you flatly would be kind of awful but this, as you can see they're making themselves a zombie animation so that the zombie can chase after you this is really wildly cool that this is done all within Hytale the game itself but it is going to be entirely possible also just I found this one to be interesting too this is what you can also do you can add any attachments to that character you want so that same zombie of that same run animation do you want to add a chest plate to it do you want to add a hat do you want to give it like villager robes you can do anything you want on the flight because they all save separate layers which is just a it's a it's a a, a nice additional thing to do. It's not just that there's some animation software inside of Hytale. It is built for gaming. It will work for, you know, gaming, and it will work for Hytale in particular, which is what you're going to want to do with this. So, why is this so amazing? I mean, besides the fact that you can obviously, like, work on stuff together, besides the fact that you can basically make your own games for creative, rather than just making your own worlds, um, but basically this just goes to show that, like, you know, the modding potential for other games is kind of shown within just the creative potential here. People have modded and changed every major game out there, some amount, somewhere. 
Even if the game is really anti-modding, people manage to do it, but when the game is more friendly to modding, more people give it a try. More people dip their toes in, and that means that more people can develop their various creative skills and make the things they want to see in a video game. But the reason uh, this is so cool is because it's all built in there natively, which means that people are going to be able to make crazy complex interesting things uh, for you to potentially play. Again, we don't know how that whole like map system will work. Will it be easy to just be like, let's check out what someone else has done? Uh, but given that they did say there was like a way to check it out within the game, like for assets and stuff, I imagine you'd also be able to see the whole experiences people have created within Hytale. It almost looks like a modding platform as much as anything else, which is a good thing for a PC game to be. So I do want to mention though at the end here, because again, when you hear about this creative mode, it sounds like the best thing in the world, but I've got to clarify one more time that this is going to be a PC only game. So they recently clarified, they did a bunch of FAQs as well as giving us the soundtrack, which again, I like a lot. I, I like video game soundtracks a lot. And this one, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty great. Gets me excited to play the game in however long. However, uh, they did a uh, quick little FAQ because they clarified they were, you know, expecting to get maybe, uh, you know, 250,000 views in the first week, but they got 32 million views and they're like, wow, that blows away. So here's a Q&A about a, bu a bunch of different stuff, including the fact that the beta does not have a definitive release date. It's not coming out in the next few months and they don't know when it's coming out altogether. So expect it to be, uh, you know, a far way in the future. Like realistically speaking, this game looks great and a lot of people are saying it's vaporware. And so far we haven't seen anything to really prove that wrong because they've given us no concrete release dates, no concrete anything, which uh, again, I personally think is, uh, you know, like a healthy thing for a game to do because if they miss the release date, then it seem even more like vaporware. But even the beta is not coming out in the next few months. And even this year, it doesn't seem like it's being clearly uh, properly communicated, but they say they'll last no more as the game kind of goes on. Again, they weren't expecting this game to be as big as it was. So they're kind of like uh, catching up to that in a way. Will there be new team roles posted to the job page soon? Yes, they're going to be getting a bunch of new job applications going. Again, they want to hire and improve and increase the size of their team. Uh, hopefully it gives you a better idea of like where they are in development wise. Also, is there a mode for free building or creative building? Yes, there was a tiny glimpse in the trailer, but there's also a full suite of optional builder tools that are accessible in this mode. Those tools were developed in direct association with our world team who each have a deep experience of building maps with blocks. Basically, you know, they worked on the Hypixel server is what they're getting at there. There are certainly enough builder tools to have a blog post dedicated to them in the future. So we'll learn more about the building tools in particular at some point in the future. But for now, all you need to know is it's enough for the people who previously might have worked on another block based game. I wonder what that one might be called. Maybe Craft Mine, something like that. But uh, you know, if you're expecting something like that, it's good enough for people who have worked on that game to work on this one too. It's what they say there, kind of if you read between the lines. Um, you know, again, they don't want to make very many direct references to Minecraft, partly because, I mean, it's kind of rude just to be like, we're going to try and destroy this game. And partly because I'm sure they don't want to make the eternal comparison, even though it's being made nonstop by the comments of this video and even me within it. So we also have a few more interesting uh, kind of questions here. We support the game after beta when it's finally released. Yes, for many years to come, they intend to uh, keep it as one of those like games as a service kind of models where like you keep updating it, etc. Also infinite map clarification. They wanted to clarify that the way the worlds work are not like zones in concentric circles. It's just there is a main world where you have those six zones. And then also once you go beyond that, it continues to generate with all of its normal features. So just keep that in mind. It, it's a confusing clarification, but it means that it's not like the further out you go, the harder it gets, especially in the infinite lands, because otherwise you get a whole lot of the hardest zone and not a lot of the easiest. It seems like you'll get a good mixture of these zones, even outside your regular world. And then finally, I found this one to be super interesting. Will the video player support YouTube and slash or Twitch? The video is the player is designed primarily designed for YouTube and Twitch. For the purposes of the unveil, we weren't clear of the requirements that we need to meet in order to show the YouTube player in the trailer, so we opted to use our own custom video player. This is another feature that will no doubt get its own blog post sometime, but yeah, basically you'll be able to watch YouTube videos and Twitch streams, or YouTube streams and Twitch videos, they both technically exist, but you can watch YouTube and Twitch via Hytale, which although you saw it in the trailer uh, with just generic videos, the fact that you can pick up any YouTube video and watch it live in the game really shows that they're trying to make a community platform here. I think everything I've said in this video so far really hints at that exact same thing. They want to make a community platform for watching videos or for making the stuff. Uh, all of these super niche communities right now are going to be coming together, and that is a good thing. Catering to those super niche communities that might not have felt very well served by the other big block making game. What's it called again? I think it's Our Craft, right? Something like that. But no, uh, you know, like that's that's a good thing. Again, I've always said this before, and again, even if you don't like Kitesail, the idea of having competition is a good thing. The idea of having something out there which pushes both games to be better is always a better thing than just having one market leader and no one else behind it. So I'm excited for Hytale. I'll keep you up to date with any major news that gets me excited too, because again, there's there's a piece of news or so every week, but the uh, the bigger news is kind of spread in there. So I'll let you know when we learn more about the creative mode and the building in particular. But for now, thank you very much for watching this video. Like if you
you liked it, share if you liked it, turn on that notification bell if you want to see more, and I'll see you all later for Store Sunday. Bye!